Okay, so um, next chapter here, we're going to get into some of our our structures. So we have, uh, I already talked in a previous video about the for loop and the while loop. Um, at this point, let's talk a little bit about um, some of your sequence structures. So I'll give you an example. Of that. I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a LabVIEW VI here. So I'll give it a second to launch LabVIEW. All right, we'll create a project. I actually could have just clicked blank VI right there. That would have been fine too. All right, uh, blank VI. And we'll hit finish. All right, so now that we're, we've got our blank VI up, I'm going to tile the windows with Control T. And I'm going to go to Programmer. Oops. Computer's running a little slow here today. Okay. Uh, programmer, put my name here, like we ask you to do on all the assignments. Uh, the project here is going to be a, a, a sequence demo. And the uh, date today is 10-3-2013. Can't type tonight. And the uh, the company again for us is is Dunwoody College, as it always will be. All right. So we've got that set up, and let me I'm gonna make this window a little bit smaller because most of what I'm gonna be doing today is gonna be in the block diagram. So I'd like to be able to see both the front panel and the block diagram at the same time. So I, I tiled them. Uh, we're just gonna take up more real estate for the block diagram and less for the front panel. So, so as an example on a, on a, on a sequence instruction. So when we go into the structure sub palette, for loop we've covered, while loop we've covered, we'll get into some of the time structures and in place elements, but um, case structure we've covered. Um, so really what I'm, and even math, math script and formula node we've covered also. So what I'm actually going to get into now, though, is what I call a flat sequence. So you can see it looks kind of like a, like a movie strip, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and grab that flat sequence. Now what you do is you create a frame of that flat sequence. So that's basically the, the frame that we're going to jump into. So assuming I have no other code, even if I had other code, at some point I would come into this code, right? Um, it's almost it's almost like a sub VI, not quite. It's going to execute the code in here, and it's it's kind of you know I say it's kind of like a sub VI. It's also kind of like a, a looping instruction too, right? I'm going to execute the code in here, except the difference is instead of looping in here, I'm going to go to whatever the next frame is. So if I want to add a frame, very similar to when you're working with the uh, the formula node or the math script, what you can do is you can right click on this this border here, and you can add a frame after. So now you end up with two frames. And if you wanted to add another frame, add frame after. Now you're going to end up with three frames. So let's just look at something that would be a sequence. Maybe there's a sequence that I always want to execute um, when something happens. So let's say, you know, I'm over on my my uh, my block diagram or my front panel right now, and I've got this little this little uh, oh, let's say we've got a push button here, okay? And so, um, so this push button here, uh, perhaps it's going to activate this sequence. So I could even go in and put a case structure around this, something like this. So if someone presses that push button, I go into this true case. Okay. Um, and let's say that we're going to uh, call this push button just something silly, like sequence uh, LEDs. So it's called sequence LEDs. My comment got a little screwed up there, so I'll make it a little bit bigger there. So this push button is going to sequence LEDs. So basically when someone presses it, it's going to enter this case structure and it's going to execute the true case. Okay, looks great. Um, seems to seems to look just fine fine to me. Um, you know, false case, maybe, maybe false case will have nothing in it. That's fine. Okay, um, but if we go into the true case, what we would what we would probably do in here now is we'd say, oh well, you know what? I want to sequence three LEDs. So I'm going to grab and I'm going to create a, a square LED here. I'm going to uh, you know I'll call this LED one. And notice if I put that space in there, like that, if I just do some quick copies, it'll call them LED two, LED three, and so on and so forth. 
So now I could say, oh, well, here we go, you know, sequence LEDs, I like it, okay? And let's say we want those LEDs to, to uh, you know, stay on for a set amount of time or something, okay? Imagine, uh, you know, I don't know, imagine you're working at the racetrack, and the racetrack wants, and this would not be in real life, but let's say the racetrack wants you to uh, sequence that, uh, you know, that uh, drag strip uh, starting light. You know, if I go into here and go to Google, uh, let's see here. We'll go to uh, drag strip, uh, drag strip, uh, uh, what do they call that, starting light or starting tree, you know, then I go to images and all of a sudden you get this nice little starting tree, you know, it goes red, yellow, green, and it has maybe a red on the bottom there, or actually it looks like it's three ambers a green and a red and I think that red is if you start too quick or something so it's got this like beep 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 go you know it's it, it goes down like that right um, so let's let's say we want to do something like that I'm not gonna make different colors I'm just gonna use three LEDs but let's say you know I want this light to light up you know I could easily just go create a constant and put a true on this right so it's gonna light up and let's say I want that light to stay on for a set amount of time I could go to a timing I could do a wait millisecond, so I would stay in this sequence, in this frame of the sequence, um, for some constant, like let's say uh, 3,000 milliseconds, which would be three seconds, right? So it looks looks like we're all happy there. Um, I can make these pretty small now. I don't, if I only have those two things in there, there really is no need for my my flat sequence here to be this large. That's one of the things about the flat sequence that's a little bit goofy, right? Is is if I need this thing to be 10 frames long, it's gonna take up a lot of real estate, all right? Um, so now let's grab this guy and let's make it so that the next one is gonna stay on for, uh, for X number of seconds, right? So it's gonna stay on for three seconds also. So we'll create a constant here. We'll make this one true now, okay? All right, so now we've got a couple LEDs that are gonna light up. They look great. You know, I go into my last one here Create a quick copy of this one, uh, do the exact same thing. We'll create a constant on this one, and we'll create a constant of true. Okay. So now you're like, hey, I think you know, I think that might actually work. Um, remember, remembering of course, on our on our our flat sequence here, the way this works. If I go to Control H for context help, consists of one or more sub diagrams or frames that execute sequentially. This is what's nice about this, is it's going to execute this one this one, then this one, and then it's going to be done. And it's not going to do anything because, you know, at that point, of course, this is going to not be pressed any longer, okay? Uh, data flow for the flat sequence uh, structure differs from the data flow for other structures. Frames in a flat sequence structure execute left to right. When all data wire values wired to, the, to a frame are available, um, the data leaves each frame as the frame finishes executing, which means the input of one frame can depend on the output of another frame. So I can pass data from frame to frame also. That's kind of cool. All right, so let, let's run this once. It looks like I've, I've got a, a run here. I'm going to you know, go to run continuous right now. And if I press this, what I'm going to see is I'm going to go LED 1, LED 2, LED 3. And now it's like, hey, that's great. you know. Um, and if I turn this off, uh, there's only one problem here is the LEDs never turn off. Um, so now if I go to run again, uh, nothing's gonna happen because <laughs> there was something to turn the LED on but never off. So let's let's say when I turn the sequence LED button off, let's say I want those LEDs to turn off, okay? What I can do is I could go into this false case and I could turn these LEDs off. Now the trouble here that you might, some of you might see is that, well, uh, these LEDs are kind of outputs. Well, how do I readdress that output? I can't go into the true case, you know, and just create a copy of this and put it in the, in the false case. Well, actually you can. What you do is you right click on that LED and you're going to create a local variable. So basically you're creating another occurrence, another point from where you can control that LED. I'm going to create a local variable for each one of these LEDs. So there's a local variable for one, a local variable for two, and by right clicking on the last one and going to create local variable, I'm creating one for LED3. So now I have three local variables for the LEDs. So if I go to the false case now, what I can do is I can bring all three of those local variables in. And all a local variable is, you know, if you don't know what a local variable is, is it's another call of that same variable. Uh, local meaning it's, it's going to be in the same VI is all it really means. Um, but it, it means I can now 
control that LED from here, but I can also control it in the false case. So in the false case, this is where I'm going to turn all of these LEDs off. So instead of being a true here, it's going to be a false. So I'll go to create constant on all three of these, create constant on all three of these. So now your local variables are going to turn those LEDs off. So I go to true, we're good to go. If I, if I, uh, if I go to run right now, you'll notice all, or actually go to run continuous. Right now, because I'm in the false case, I'm going to be in the false case right now, all of them are going to be turned off. If I look at the true case and I press this button, I go into the true case, they're all going to turn on. Check that out. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so now they're going to stay on until, of course, I hit this switch. And now I'm going to jump into the false case. At least I should here. Let's see why we're not jumping in the false case here. Oh, it did jump in the false case. I think we were, we were just waiting to jump out of there. Uh, let me close this out here real quick. There we go. So let's try that one more time just to make sure we got everything executing. So true. It's going to go one. Then it's going to go two. Then it's going to go three. Um, okay, so here's something to notice. Here's the reason why it was a little bit slow when I went before, okay? When I went before, what happened, right, what it's doing right now is it's actually, even though all three LEDs are already on, it's jumping right back into that first stacked sequence, or excuse me, flat sequence, and running through all three again. So when I go to the false case right now, if I turn this off, it could take three seconds, six seconds, it could take up to nine seconds to get to that false case. And you see it just went to that false case by all of these going off, okay? Um, so let's say we wanted to change it up a little bit. Let's say we didn't want it to work like that. Let's say we want this thing, instead of working like that, we want this thing to do something a little different. Um, when I get to LED2, I want to turn off LED1. So I could do something like that too. I could create a local variable of LED1 and I could put a false on it. Okay, there's a false of LED1. And when I get to LED3, I could create a local variable of LED3, of L, oh, excuse me, of LED2, create a local variable there, and this one, you know, could turn this one off. Um, I, you know, I don't necessarily, you know, care a whole lot about what we're doing here, um, just to know that we're just trying something different. So I'm going to go to run continuous. I hit this now, I'm going to go one. When I go to two, one's going to turn off, and when I go to three, two's going to turn off. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, um, so I kind of like that. That doesn't seem like a bad idea. Uh, seems to work okay. Um, the other thing I can do is I can change the action of the button too. Right now, one of the reasons why it was a little bit strange when we ran it that first time um, was, I'm going to take these ones out here, by the way. Okay, one of the things when we ran it that very first time that was strange was we went to run, it went to one, two, three. And as soon as I turn this button off, I don't, jump out you know I just don't get to jump out or anything uh, if I hit stop right now I may have to wait nine seconds because I don't know where I am in these in this sequence here so I'm gonna wait some amount of time before these LEDs are gonna turn off which it just did there so one of the ways you could get around that too is you could say every time I press the button I only want it to go through the sequence once um, that's really an, an action of the of the button you know if I right click on the button and I go to mechanical action You'll see there's a lot of different mechanical actions here. Okay, some of them act like switches. Um, some of them act like like buttons. Okay, um, you know. So what you do is you, you you pick one, you press it, and you see how this one works. Okay, on, off. Okay, that looks like similar to what we had, right? Let's try this one here. This one here, on, off. You know, we can even go to run continuous and try it. And say okay this one goes on off so that doesn't really change much for me here right so let's right click again and go to mechanical action um, you actually can go through properties too this is kind of probably an easier way to do it is to go to uh, operation under properties okay and you can actually read switch when pressed uh, change state on a button press remain uh, until another button press so this one that one that's how that one's gonna work switch when released okay not much there different switch and tell release this is the one I like notice switch and tell released is it's momentary it switches and it stays switched 
until I let it go. So the nice thing about that particular one, let me check and just see if I got it here. I don't remember if I changed it or not. Yeah, I didn't actually change it, by the way. <laughs> so we'll go back into the properties. I want to I want to make that one switch until released. So that's going to be my new version of this. I have to hold it down if I want it to stay on. So I hit OK. And I want to go to run continuous. When I press this, it, it's only momentary, but it gets me into the sequence. One, then two, then three. And then it's going to jump out of the sequence because now this switch is going to be false and it's going to go right back. If I want it to actuate again, it's going to actuate again, just like what we're looking at for this to do. So this this seems like a, a great example of, of something we can try with this. Okay, So that's going to be using local variables, using your flat sequence structure. So we've got a lot of, lot of things in our arsenal now that we can we can make work with this. So you could even look at sequencing uh, a sequence structure like this, you know, if you wanted to build a traffic signal light with green, yellow, red or something like that, it'd be easy to do. All right, um, now let's look at what the difference between the flat sequence is. And I wonder if I can just change it. Uh, oh, of course not, it doesn't let you do. Oh yeah, replace with stacked sequence, you see this? Yeah, I love this. They did this with for loops and while loops a while back where you, you know, you're in the middle of a for loop and you discover, oh, God, I really wish this was a while loop. Well, you can actually just right click on the board and do a replace. So when you when you look in here under your structures, you've got a flat sequence, which is, you know, left to right. It takes up a lot of real estate. But you've also got a stacked sequence where they stack up like pages in a notebook. So where this comes in handy is let's say you get a, a really long one, right? I'm not trying to trying to fool you here or anything. This one doesn't need to be this long. But all of a sudden, when you get these really long sequences, they, they tend to be messy. They go way off the page like this, right? So the flat sequence is fine. And I might even have more frames. I might have 100 frames. Uh, at that point, the real estate you know, in graphical programming doesn't really provide uh, uh, an intuitive look at what that sequence looks like. So an intuitive look at, would be to right click on this. And instead of using the flat sequence, we can replace it with a stacked sequence. Now, well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is now I've got, you know, a similar size individual frame, but now instead of, you know, having frame one, two, three, left to right, now you can actually look at the different frames here. There's there's uh, the second one. Um, they're going to index. So this is frame zero. This is frame one. And this is frame two. And you say, well, what is this zero dot dot two? Well, all that means is right now I have two total frames. So I go from frame zero to two. Okay. If I, if I wanted to add frames, I could actually, I can actually right click on this and uh, I can go add frame after or before my current frame, just like we were doing before in the, in the flat sequence. But notice how nice and small this stacked sequence gets here. I can look at frame one, I can look at frame zero. Now, in some cases where you've got a lot of frames, it makes a lot of sense to stack them just to conserve on real estate. Um, if you have two frames, we may not care. We may want to see both frames at the same time, so we might not want to stack them. But you'll notice this particular version of this is going to work the exact same way. LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, and then once it times out, it's going to go to the false case and turn them all off. And if I want to hit start, it's going to do it all over again, and we're off and running. So this particular lecture, what I want you to do is, is go back and try the, this demo. Uh, the homework for this week is actually going to have you do some structuring. Uh, it may require a case structure. Uh, it for sure will require some sort of sequencing structure. And uh, very possibly, you could, you know, you know, what might you do even better is put all of this in a while loop so you don't even have to use run continuous anymore. Um, so, so there's a lot of different things that you guys can do to, to play around with this, but I want you to test it out um, and, and see how it works. Um, and in a future lecture, we'll get into some of the other structures that are out there for us. So that's it. Thanks.